Welcome once again to our continuing YouTube video series on business law and unanimous shareholders agreements. My name is Christopher Newfeld of Newfeld Legal. And in this particular YouTube video, we will be discussing why one should have a unanimous shareholders agreement and providing another reason why you should seriously consider having a shareholders agreement. And the reason we have that is it gives you the ability to negotiate with your share fellow shareholders. Now, why do I say that? Well, if you don't have something in place, even though it might not be perfect in most unanimous shareholders agreements because they're projecting into the future are not necessarily perfect for every situation. Nevertheless, what they do provide is negotiating ability. And what do I mean by negotiating ability? Well, in a shareholders agreement, you will have explicit rules, explicit results for certain situations, in particular exit situations and sales situations. Without those, you have no rules, you have no leverage, you have no ability to negotiate a proper and reasonable arrangement. And the the other side is in a position to counterbalance you and to continually refuse your request for something reasonable. And I've seen this too many times in my own legal dealings. So what happens? Well, you have the ability to negotiate given, let's say an arrangement comes up and you need to get a shareholder out and you have a shotgun clause in there. Well, a shotgun clause might be not what you're really looking for, but everybody knows there is in the shareholders agreement that shotgun clause. So when you go to negotiate, you say, look, here is a more reasonable arrangement. I will go. I want to negotiate with you. If we can't negotiate or negotiation goes south, I'm simply going to invoke the shareholders clause that says we go to a shotgun. Maybe it's a put call. Maybe it's a piggyback. Whatever the arrangement is, it, it, if there is some core arrangement in the shareholders agreement, you have that fallback. As I said, typically they're not specifically designed for something in the future from an exacting standpoint. You don't know what the future is going to hold. So you got a generalist arrangement. It's going to be harsh, probably get harsh for everybody. But at least it's an arrangement that will force a resolution. And knowing that there is a force resolution mechanism in place will drive people to negotiate the best possible bargain. And if there is nothing, then you have no leverage in negotiations. They can simply sit back and say, I'm not going to do anything. You keep on doing all the work you're doing in the company. I'll keep on doing nothing or whatever I'm doing. Take me to court. I still have my interest in the company. And do what you want to do. But I am not going to be dictated to and they take that attitude with people and instead of addressing something resolving it in a very short and brief time yeah you might hurt a bit of feelings but it's going to be a lot less than if you have a unanimous no unanimous shareholders agreement so you're going to have a mechanism that you have behind you that'll be even harsher for everybody but will affect results and will thus bring to people to negotiating table and find a negotiated solution. If you don't have that, well, then you're in a heck of a lot of trouble because you got no leverage. You got no way to bring them to the table outside of bringing them to court. And I've mentioned many times in these YouTube videos the court is not the place to be going to for these matters. The legislation that created the 
system under which you work was specifically designed to allow people to contract on their own and very much anticipated their contracting amongst their fellow shareholders and having a unanimous shareholders agreement. So when you don't have one, well, the court's put in a hard place. And it's not a great place to be as the one starting to initiate the action. Because it's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be cheap. And it's not going to have little impact on the corporation. Trust me. It's a bad place to be. Very bad place to be. So, get that unanimous shareholders agreement and put in place and have it as that agreement you don't really even pull out most of the time. You work things out most of the time. But everybody knows it's there. And if problems do arise, if negotiations stumble and falter, there's a harsh reality. And everybody's bound to that harsh reality because it's set out on paper. It's even recognized oftentimes in the legislation and it's clearly recognized by the courts that you will be going to the harsh mechanisms that are set forth in the unanimous shareholders agreement and people will have to fulfill those arrangements. So to get something better, they will negotiate. Otherwise, they'll have the harsh way and at least with a harsh mechanism, you know there's a way out of it and a way forward. So get it put in place and know it's there. And you'll be better off for it. And you'll be more confident putting the work, putting the effort, putting the money in, putting the sacrifice into the corporation. Because you have a greater degree of certainty. You have ability to negotiate out of bad situations with your fellow shareholders. And I hope this YouTube video has been informative and provides you some further clarification and insights into the purposes of unanimous shareholders agreements and what they serve in relation to operating and engaging with your fellow shareholders. Thank you.